Mike Pacella here coming to you from my studio in the south of France. Greetings and warm salutations to you and yours. Hope you're doing well. I'm in kind of a silly mood today. Even though it's a little cold, that's why I'm wearing a flannel shirt. It's all the way down to 43 degrees. <laughs> Poor Mike. Uh, for this lesson, I'll be talking about the Beatles version of Twist and Shout, recorded for their Please Please Me album on February 11th, 1963. A Twist and Shout was a hit for the Isley Brothers in 1962, and the Beatles adapted their version. The Isley Brothers did it as uh, rhythm and blues, but the Beatles stripped it down to guitars and uh, did it in a hard rockin' fashion. Now, they were booked into Abbey Road's for three three-hour session, and at the end of 12 hours of recording, um, they didn't have enough songs to complete the album. So they had to go at uh, Hold Me Tight, but that didn't work out, and somebody suggested they do Twist and Shout. So the Please Please Me album is basically the Beatles doing their live act in the studio, and they had done Twist and Shout many, many times. But after that 10-hour session, um, you know, John, who was sick that day with a cold, didn't think he could sing it. So he um, sucked down a couple of zoobs, throat lozenges, and gargled with some milk. He took his shirt off, stripped down to the waist to uh, either sweat it out or, or cool off, and uh, he sang the song with wild abandon. Uh, in one take, live, to two-track. They did do a second take, but uh, the first one is the one that became the record. And fun facts to no one tell, they had two gigs to do the next day uh, in Yorkshire and Lancashire. Um, but uh, you know that, that vocal and that song became a quintessential Beatles hit and one of the greatest rock vocals of all times. John plays wonderful rhythm guitar on it, and George, too, who knew the part so well. And the solo has some cool uh, you know, interplay on it between uh, George and John. At the end of the song, you can hear Paul shout out, yeah, because he knew they had just done something amazing. And there's like 18 different versions of Twist and Shout that was recorded for different TV shows and live performances you can find on the, on the web. And you'll see that they, they play it a little different on every one. But I'll be talking about uh, basically the way they, they did it on the record. Um, so uh, let's see, I think that's everything. Yeah, so let's get started. I'm having a cup because it's cold outside. <laughs> Me kids on the cup. <laughs> mm, John plays his uh, 1958 Rickenbacker 325. I'm using this reissue Rickenbacker 325, and I'm plugged into a uh, Vox AC30. Lennon uses his typical banjo D chord, voice like this, to a G, to an A7. Now in some of the clips you see him play um, his D like this. You'll see him play his G voice like this with his thumb. So he's, voice, he's playing four strings, reaching his thumb around. And he plays his A7 like that too this thumb around. I can't do that. My hands are way too big. Um, but for the most part, when you first start learning the song, just do the down-up strumming of those three chords. So just strum, down-up, strum. And, and do that as many times as necessary to get that smooth. Now when you listen to the record, you can hear John's doing accents in different places. Sometimes he accents hard, uh, like it right at the beginning on the D. Bum, bum, bum. Right, two down strokes, two down strokes on the G, and then the A7. If you listen to the record, you can hear that he's, he's also doing some little double accents on the G and on the A, like this. ghosting, a little muting by not pushing all the strings down and getting some extra little percussive stuff. So sometimes, sometimes straight. Sometimes accent. Sometimes accenting on the G and the A. And he always does it down. I'll do it really slow like. Right. 
So work on that. And when you play the song, you know, sometimes do it straight. Sometimes put an accent on G. Sometimes put the accent on the A. Sometimes put the accent on the G and the A. And you'll sound just like John. I'll get a close up of that. A really fun rhythm part to play. Now on the solo, um, George, as you'll see in a moment, plays the exact same solo four times in a row. But John, being the creative genius that he is, or maybe making some mistakes, it still works out to be really cool. So here's how John plays uh, his solo. He plays like this. He starts here on like a D form to kind of a G form. Top of the G to an A form. Stays on that A to a D form, A to G. So it sounds like this very, very first time. Right? Second time when he gets up to the A, he includes the E note uh, on the top of the A form. So like this. And on the way down, instead of playing just the A form again, he lifts up the second figure and gets to the G form, to the third and fifth of the D. So the second time. Um, now, you'll see later, George is just playing right there on that part, like an E minor form or a A7 form, while John is playing. So together, it forms like an A7. Right? It's this great part. So the third time, he makes the A like an A6th. John goes. He might even play the sixth here. Might be like that. It might be. Then again, that uh, A note with an open G and an open B. Down to the G form. To the top part of a D triad. And the fourth time, he plays uh, like he plays the second time. So the whole solo goes like this. All right, here's a close up of that now. That's such a cool solo. And then when they stack the harmony, John plays a, a regular A and, and pounds on a regular A until Paul goes up to the seventh. So it's like, and he starts to low strings and, and adds more strings, sort of like this. And then reckless abandon. Just, you know, full of bravado and wonderful, youthful energy. I love that. Um, they also really pound hard on the A7 when, you know, at the very end when he's going, eh, shake it, shake it, you know. Just. just mimicking what he's singing. And then again, uh, another vocal buildup, uh, which is half as long. You know, like. Uh, you'll see him when he plays it live. He's he's barring it, but he's only playing the low strings. You know, it looks like this. That might even been more notes than you actually hear. I think you just hear the 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 root, the fifth, and another root. Maybe like that to a D9. I'll get a close-up of that. And those are all the parts that John Lennon plays on Twist and Shout. Just really cool 
uh, amazingly simple but effective rhythm guitar playing. The Beatles had Twist and Shout in their repertoire for a long time, so they were quite familiar with it. And after a long day of recording, George wasn't going to take any chances. So he uh, pretty much kept to the same part over and over again. It works great, though. Um, he was playing his uh, duo jet uh, on the record. I'm using this, uh, this Gretsch Country Classic. Uh, so he, he plays pretty much in fifths, which are just like root and fifth of the chord. That's in the key of D, so his D chord is like this. His G chord is like this. And his A chord is like this. He also makes his A7 like this. And those are pretty much all the chords in the whole song. Uh, he uses a little lick to, to lead into it over and over again, and that lick goes like this. Right? So let me get a close up of all that. So those are the components that make up George's part. And his rhythm is like this. And even though he's just playing fifths, he, he's voicing the chord like a full bar chord, and he's voicing the, the A7 like a full bar chord, but he's just basically playing the bottom strings, and sometimes getting up to the third string, getting that third. But the lick is this. And that's pretty much George's part for the entire song. Um, except when they do the ah part, they stack the ah ah. He plays an open A here, and they play. And note that George's is, is accenting like they're singing, you know. The so it's like one, two, and four. One, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four. And George strums across that A, and, and you'll hear him play the six a little bit. You know, as he's strumming hard with a lot of vim and vigor, uh, he gets to the uh, E string, which kind of forms an A6, you know. Now, although that seems extremely simple to do, practice it because to get it with the same kind of, uh, you know, these guys were in their 20s, that kind of uh, bravado isn't that easy. It really isn't to, to just play consistently and especially to play for, you know, entire uh, two and a half minutes just to do it perfectly. And George does it absolutely perfectly on the record. And it's fun to do, too. Um, for the solo, the solo is uh, played by George and John, and this is George's part. It's, uh, it's basically like this. And he plays that four times. So it's, it's starting on like a, 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 a D and a F sharp, the bottom of a D chord, to a G and a B, bottom of a G chord, completes the G chord, to like an A form, to what I guess you could call an E minor form, or a... A7 form, back to the G form, to a D form. Very clever. Four times. And he slides into one of them. He's like... Slight uh, slide into the G form.
at the end of the song, when they get to the stacking, the harmony vocals, once again, George is playing here. That chord there, that A chord, and, uh, and then they walk up. And he walks up again in fifths from A to D. And so it's like an A and an E, and a half step up. And then he plays a uh, D9. So after the big walk up, you know. And that's all the parts you need to play Twist and Shout. Now for fun, I took a swing at, uh, at uh, doing a vocal version of it. I realize I'm nowhere near the singer John Lennon is. It's just fun to do, so take it with a grain of salt and, uh, and use it for a reference. I know I'm a silly guy, but having fun is what playing the guitar should be all about, especially when you're doing the Beatles. Hey, if you'd like to drop me a line, do so at MikeBocelli.com. It's always cool to hear from you, and I answer every email. And if you would, please subscribe to this channel. So until next time, thanks for hanging out with me.